Want to travel from home to Japan for free? Well, it's called tax business expense. As long as you make a YouTube video out of it, you can go wherever you want for free. Okay, wait. Okay. Apparently, my accountant just called and I'm, I'm something called uh, bankrupt. But the real reason why I've come to Japan is to see if it's actually worth it. Have the big YouTubers lied to us or is it as magnificent as they claim to be? That's why I've repurposed this soccer cup to contain 100 YouTubers videos about Japan. I'm going to be picking them at random and going to them to see if the hype is real. First up, the handle! Oh! <laughs> Apparently, the tiles are actually as hard as the rooftop tiles. That actually hurts. It's, just it's actually that. a brick. Oh my, oh my god. god. I mean, maybe slight help with the slit here, but st still feels pretty solid. So first up, we did a warm up with five to grasp the technique. The kind instructor said a male average is 10. So if we can't break 10, that, that doesn't mean we're below average. It just means that this was false advertising. Huh? Painful! <laughs> it really did hurt a lot. I don't understand why they're laughing. But we have one more enemy to defeat. Trasha Testo. Ah! So the monkey still reigns supreme, but this was a really unique place to visit and try something you couldn't do anywhere else. Even if breaking tiles wasn't the only thing you were breaking. All right, follow me. I rented this whole place. But before we see it, socks off. Next up, we are visiting one of the most touristy places in Tokyo, Team Labs. And we indeed had to take our socks off. This is basically an art museum, but for experience. You have a pillow room that you can traverse, rooms full with immersive art, and you can even touch shit. This is sensory overload done correctly. He's also hyped it up as one of the best things they've ever done. And this is the most unique thing you could ever do on a vacation. And while I completely agree that this place is definitely a unique experience, I wouldn't say it's the most unique thing. Like, what about these things? So Mr. Beast rented out this entire place for him as a friend. And that looked pretty cool. But if you're a normal tourist here, well, uh, you're gonna end up staying in lines. With the final part that takes place outside, we had to stay in line for 30 minutes just to see some flowers hanging from the ceiling. Which, okay, I'll, I'll give it to the place. It was really cool, but Jimmy definitely overhyped it a bit too much. Next up, Kaki Neko Cafe. Uh, yeah, yeah, this place is uh, definitely one of the most touristy places in Tokyo. And I did not choose this just because I wanted to go there. There are a lot of tons of videos about this. L like this one, for example. They advertise that the capybara's name is Kikurage, which checks out. They have a whole board of animals who work there. Apparently, we have some EP cats. Check, check, and check. And you can also feed the capybara. But as the ball was that we were, we weren't gonna put some kibble on the plate of our poor, uh, shit, what was uh, her name? Uh, Kikurage. Instead, we paid premium to get the best green leaves, which apparently also the cats loved a lot. But enough of this cuteness overdose. Next up, we're hitting the hard hitting journalism. Hitting. This is the Hie Shrine. I like this one because not a lot of people know about it, which makes it, you know, hidden, which is part of the title. And we're gonna discover if it actually is as hidden as they say. This is one of the most Instagrammable places in the city. First up, you can wash your hands from all the sinning you've been committing and then head to the gates. Depending on where you came from, you either have to get past the temple or if you came from behind, then you're, you're already there. I just walk up and take pictures. Why are you even consulting me on this? It's fairly decent because you can take pictures, but we had to wait around 20 minutes in line for everything to be free. So it's kind of touristic, kind of not. So that sort of happens sometimes. There's peak times and then there's non-peak times. I feel like if you're bringing up the terminology of peak times, then it might not be as secret as you were leading on to believe. Next up. Gigo one. Uh, that's one McDonald's cheeseburger down the drain. Time to lose all our money. There were seven floors in total in this building, with four dedicated to crane games, and one of them had. Oh! 
Oh, I just want to keep gambling, Maylene. I can't help myself. I'm addicted, man. I understand him. After I spent $10 trying to get the Naruto statue and still didn't get it, we decided to move on and check out all the other claw games in this building. Though, we didn't have any luck with those either. And then I saw somebody poaching my Naruto! They're poaching our Naruto. So I had to rush back and <laughs> put 10 more dollars. Should I soon my send someone? Yeah. Oh, I gotta get to my mom. Okay. Oh my god, asking for help actually helps. Who could have guessed? This cost around 5,500 yen. Altogether, probably worth about 80 to 90 dollars. And I think I spent like... 170 maybe to 200 dollars 2200 yen on amazon i think we got a fairly decent price so this video gets a pass i did pay double of what it was worth at this next secret spot hidden away in shubia this is where adults go to play around so this place is one of those kind of like mystery rooms that you have to solve just to get in you have to find a secret lizard hidden in a book just to get in they will vape inside your drinks for free and there's a hidden VIP section. This place seems amazing. So, of course, we had to head there. We found this place through the secrets of the dark web. And also the huge sign on the street. <laughs> Once we got up through the elevator, proved our IQ and got in, the server popped up and was like, yo, do you have a reservation? We were like, no, because it's a secret place that nobody knows about. And she was like, all right, well, we're fully booked. Come on, sir, please. This wasn't even on the weekend. This is, uh, this is not a place that nobody knows about very clearly. Next up, Bear Cafe. There's like a hole in the wall. If you order a drink, then a bear's hand comes out and starts to serve you food. Oh, they gave us candy. So this place has something to do with social anxiety. Like you, if you work there, you don't have to show your face. So it's much easier for an introvert to work. Or maybe it's not. I don't know. I don't do my research. I'm like trash taste in that regard. I just like to make shit up. Honestly, this place was really cool. It absolutely Thank lived up right. to the hype. The coffee was good as well. Next up, your Yogi Park. Best time to visit Japan, October to about November. This is not like any of the parks that I'm really used to. The trees here were huge, and it felt like an entire forest in the middle of Tokyo. I don't think we're in the right place. We weren't in the right place. Because the autumn colors are phenomenal. I feel like this is cool. Like, it looks all right, but I would not call this vibrant or anything. I think Yoyogi Park is probably the best people watching spot in all of Tokyo as well. What did he mean by that? This feels a bit awkward. Bro, it's a dog. There's more of them. Look at the dogs. All right, fine. I know what Chris meant now. But up next, Cap Capsule Hotel. <laughs> but, but I have a hotel room already. But, Hey guys, it's our first night in Japan ever, and we're sleeping at a capsule hotel. Looking at YouTube videos, there's this one capsule hotel that exists that every single YouTuber has to visit. According to Google, they should be it, but I have no idea if they accept the same day entry. So I walked up to the machine, started typing in stuff, didn't understand anything because it was all in Japanese, used Google Lens to translate stuff, pressed some more buttons until it took a picture of my face, and then promptly discovered that nope, they don't do same day entry. Thankfully, it was just uh, 20 degrees outside. I guess next up we're going into Golden Guy. And our guide here is Victor. Hey. It is insane how much they manage to pack in here. Because I thought this was just one single street. Then it turns out that there's six streets. Then it turns out that there's two floors to everything. The vibes are immaculate. And it was actually a really inviting, friendly, easygoing atmosphere. If anything, there were way too many tourists there. I'd say this bar is pretty inviting. Because all the bars are so small that they can only have like three to six people in them, most of the bars were full. So the majority of the time, we were just looking for somewhere to sit down to and have a drink at. But once Victor found us a bar, it was quite nice to just kick back, sit down, enjoy a thematic drink and converse with the locals a bit. You can actually walk down there if you want. I'm good. Remember that most bars in the Golden Guy and in Tokyo do have a cover charge. Also correct. It usually is around five to six dollars just to sit down in the bar, plus like ten dollars per drink. Next up, we got Kura Sushi. Mostly, I'm interested in seeing how the sushi conveyor belt works and the no socializing part, because you don't need to talk to anybody. You just use this little machine to check in, go to your table, make it look like you're coming to your table, because that's more cinematic, I guess. Order through a tablet, pick your things up at the top, and you're done. So while I'm waiting for all the orders to come, I'm going to make some green tea. You do have unlimited free green tea. 
So in every Kurazushi, they have a gachapon game. Which is ingenious, because they're gamifying eating food. But we uh, did not end up winning. Oh no. This is just speed running the seven deadly sins. The name of the store is Toramana, and it is situated right in the heart of the anime maker itself. Akihabara. So the name of the place checks out, but the inside doesn't seem correct. Okay, I might have to rewatch Joey's video. This is um, not a comic book store that I expected. So I've gotten some very, very exclusive access tonight to Tokyo, nay, Japan's biggest hentai store. Aha, uh -huh, all right. Well, this makes sense. At the end of this month, August 2022, the physical store here of Toranana in Akihabara is going to be shutting its doors for the final time. Wait, wait, where the fuck am I then? These days, most people go to the Tokyo Sky Tree, which you can see in the distance over there, 634 meters high. But because it's on the outskirts of the city, you don't get a very good view of the downtown area. Now, since I'm not a local, I don't exactly know what he means by downtown area because all of this looked nice. Going up the elevator feels like you're going up in a spaceship, your ears pop multiple times, and the view is immaculate. Really reminiscent of Akira. Look, we see everything here. It's a Tokyo Tower. We can see Mammoth Fuji. <laughs> I'm not coping. Can we get much and they also offer you analog filters on the screen, so you can take amazing photos like this. Wow. Similarly, Tokyo Tower, which you can, I feel like I can reach out and touch from here, has a great view, but you can't see Tokyo Tower because you're in it, so it's a pretty big floor. But you do get your whole entire monthly workout done by going up the stairs for the entire way. It's kind of like a high score thing even, where you see the number of steps you've gone through. God, I love being sweaty in a highly touristy area. Aside from the parking lot, which you do have a really fantastic view of, I gotta agree with Chris, the overall view was kinda neat, it feels like you're in a high rise, I wouldn't say it's anything special. So we're on the sky deck of Mori Tower, which is a 238 meter building right in the middle of the city. In my opinion, this is the best view of Tokyo. Absolutely amazing, I love the Tokyo Tower view. Though what made it stand out a bit more is that they do have art exhibitions there. And right now there was Blackjack, which was really cool to look into. Next up. 2D cafe. Upon walking into the cafe, you literally feel like you have been transported into a drawing. Out of all the cafes that I went to in Tokyo, this one is the most neat. Now, while this looks pretty great on the camera, which I am surprised at, being there, it was more like a 5 out of 10. It's like a nice theme, but it wasn't. It didn't feel that special. Do you feel like you're transported into a drawing? Yes. No. Sure. Guess the final verdict is that it was worth it. Side quest time. We're heading to Maylene's office, the boss of Geeks Plus, because she pulled a Yakuza move on me when I was at AX this year. She gave me a turtle uh -huh. soup. If you guys don't know, I have a pet turtle, so I'm gonna pay her back the best way I know how. Cat jerky. You uh, gave me graciously turtle soup. Did you eat it? Yeah. You did? Why yeah. did you eat it? Bruh. It, it took me a while, but I got this for you. No. No. There's no way. There's no way. It's a British short hair. They're too good to be eaten. Oh, that's like the, the Wagyu, Wagyu cat. No, maybe. <laughs> Next up, we're heading to the most basic thing in Japan, Shibuya Crossing. This is gonna sound dumb, but the Shibuya Crossing felt much smaller than I expected it to be. I don't know why, maybe it was too overhyped in my brain, but unless I'm recording it in a GoPro, it just feels like a semi-big crosswalk. I didn't really find any specific videos made about it, only live streams, which were the multiple of. So, uh, hey, look, I'm, I'm in a live stream, yay. Next up, the art aquarium. It's supposed to be- Pretty amazing in there. And yes, it was aesthetically pleasing. It was really, really beautiful. Like I mean, overall it looks kind of cool, but it looks very sad. The fish are just in bowls. There were some aquariums that were clearly bigger, so the fish would roam freely and have a nice time, but there were others that were uh, way too small for them, so I, I don't know. I'm not a fan of this place. There was also a game at them, which we weren't sure what the mission of it was. Maybe to put the fish out of their misery? Let's see where we're going next. Premiere 2 takes us to Premiere One, I think I can do that. Let's go. You based your entire channel, your entire brand around that one bar. It has to be amazing, right? 
It's very good if it is open. Light is green, trap is clean. That means we're open for business. Here we go again. This is the fabled dart board where Ian and I have thrown hundreds if not thousands of darts. Here I learned that Pete is an insanely competitive dart pro. He won $300 from us. Literally robbed us blind. Took our money from our wallet. So this is the fabled Chin Chidorin. The goal is to get uh, two of the same number and the other number is your score. Hell yeah, another game where we can lose some money. Out. Though they did have unlimited popcorn, which I learned after leaving there, because I, I was so confused. Why did they keep on bringing more of it? Funny game! And third time's the charm. Let's lose even more money to Pete. He now owns my business, but the joke's on him, because I'm bankrupt and he needs to pay off my loan shots. Yeah, well, it's not a premier one night if you're not. Why is my shot way more than... than... <laughs> I am in Akihabara on the hunt for some gacha gacha. I'm gonna find every single one and buy every single one, no matter what it costs. My name is Gacha. PewDiePie talked in a video that was 40 minutes long. And he had fun, I think. So let's get some. Essentially, these are just Kinder Surprise eggs without the tasty chocolate around them. You see what you might get on the box, and then you hope you get something good. Even though technically all of it is going to be plastic and trash. On average, it's one dollar per trash, but the more expensive one goes up to like five dollars per trash. All right, let's see what I got. Creeper. One out of five. Cherry cocktail. Looks cuter. Two out of five. Sake puddle and a cup. Three out of five. I don't know what purpose it serves, but you can make the head fly off three out of five i don't i kind of mm, wait all right did it that was awful uh <laughs> congratulations we now have a lot of plastic trash you're welcome turtles so this wasn't originally even planned but while i was there i saw onigiri tweet out how she went to otro cafe so i want to test it out and oh my god this is probably one of the best animal cafes you can go to in tokyo the otros were so fun and cute and just playing around and just <laughs> We are about to go to a pachinko or a casino of sorts. So while gambling technically is illegal in Japan, you can buy balls for money and win more balls with initial balls. And then if you exchange those balls in a different building, it's not gambling. One ball is two yen. Okay. Pretty cheap, but trust me, they're going to go pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to agree if it wasn't for the fact that I had no idea how to operate the machine. I thought you just put balls in, but oh my god, is it so difficult to understand what's going on. I had an easier time getting a bachelor's degree in computer science than understanding this machine. That was loud! <laughs> you 100% need to wear your protection if you're here. And if you're tired of gambling with your balls, you can also gamble for money in slot machines. I don't understand what the rules here are anymore. Next up, Maid Cafe. So, a couple things about those. Uh, first of all, there's supposed to be some live shows there, which is really cool. They're dancing on a stage. I'm expecting to get some more and more beams. There's also a bonus if there's a guy with light sticks there, like jamming long. And uh, it's supposed to be really awkward. So, um, well, I can make that happen for sure. They didn't allow us to film inside, but the experience was incredibly awkward. Though you get used to it quite fast. I really liked all the cute drinks and foods they had there. And while we didn't get a show, we did get customized Polaroids. Overall, a much better experience than I had anticipated. I love these drinks because I can't read how bad they are for me. Gabba for sleep. Now this is the one product I'm actually gonna save to last and I don't wanna fall asleep and face plant the table and turn into a snoring wreck. How the fuck did Chris get this? I went through 15 different combinis, didn't find a single one, and then had to ask Victor to order it from Amazon Japan. Supposed to have three a day. I wanna sleep good tonight, so that's pretty decent chocolate. This is called optimizing. You eat double the amount, you get double the sleep. My sleep wasn't really that much better. This Coca-Cola Plus, which you can only get in Japan and a few other countries in Asia, it's got dextrin in it. A lot of dextrin, which is a dietary fiber. Thankfully, finding Coca-Cola Plus was much easier. And this is also called Coca-Cola Fiber Plus, which I thought was for shitting. So I filled myself shitting 
even though technically it's advertised as being healthy for you. Though I, I didn't have a better shits and I didn't feel healthier either. Next up is the Porbitan D. It is all the excitement of Red Bull in a tiny form factor, in a glass bottle. Gives the illusion of being some kind of medicine, but actually it's incredibly potent. When you drink this, you will be able to see through space and time for about 25 minutes. It's been a long day and it has to go a bit longer. So I'm pulling out liquid cocaine, as Chris would say. It's supposed to give immense power and then I will die two hours later. Tastes like uncarbonated Red Bull. This did absolutely nothing. I've had hot chocolate that made me more alert than this. Well, I just broke the bike. FYI, this does not go under business expense. I went to the arcade in Japan to try out every single game. Yay, look at me pretending to play a game because I didn't know how to get it working. Time to see if Felix is correct and his tier list is goated or not. Switching game to Nostalgia OP3. This is a rhythm game that heavily mimics a piano. It was decently fun to play, but tapping the buttons didn't feel as accurate as I liked it to be. Somehow doing it on what replicates a piano made me feel like an adult baby, just like mashing buttons. I would say pretty decent, but uh, uh, fairly easy. Next up, Sound Voltex Exceed Gear. Looks incredibly amazing and also plays pretty well. It's a pretty good game. It makes you feel like you're a scuffed D or something like that. I love this thing. Turning the knob and having the screen tilt was the highlight. Next up, Taiko no Tatsujin. Kids Corner or not, this game is fucking awesome. Looking at the footage, this looks absolutely dumb. But my god, was it fun. It's a classic arcade game, has to be an S tier. I don't completely agree with everything, but overall I'd say that the list was fairly accurate. Next up, we went to Dawn Robot Cafe. But behind those robots, they are real persons. The interesting part in this cafe is that every robot is piloted by a person who's disabled, so that otherwise wouldn't be able to work. So this gives disabled people means to work and socialize. If you reserve the Orhima service, then you can have these little robots next to you at all times talking to you. So it's kind of like a maid cafe, but with robots. They even talk to each other when they have the free time, which is really cute. Except when they teleport behind you, and then you have to pretend like you just didn't have a heart attack and be like, hey, hey hello, konnichiwa. Where will the soccer take us next? Just underneath the Tokyo Tower, we have the Red Tokyo. Or the Tokyo Red. Shit, there's a car here. <laughs> this place will make you feel like you stepped into a spaceship. It's also... Oh fuck. It's also supposed to be three floors of pure entertainment. Physical and challenge friends in cyber soccer, jumping games, interactive climbing walls, an array of VR experiences, and lots more. This is one of the places that I recommend coming to near the closing time because there's no lines there. And I don't really see myself waiting 60 minutes in line to try a tech demo. Because while the games were fun, most of them just felt like tech demos. Just interesting, unique things to do once and never again. Wasn't this an episode of Black Mirror? Though they did have one entire floor dedicated to racing sims, which was really cool. Another side quest time. I bought a can of chocolate. Something. What the f I, I can't speak or read Japanese, I'm sorry. So we have to discover what it is. It is anchovies. It is anchovies in chocolate. What the fuck, Japan? One for each? Let's fuck it up. No chocolate though. Yeah, Not like a bit. Tomato sauce, pretty much. Yeah. Could be worse. Alright. Where are we heading next? Logan Paul Sue. Um. Suck have ending machines by Chris Broad. Apparently, you can drink all you want as long as you pay for it. Incredibly insightful commentary, Mudan. I think there's about 100 varieties of sake here from all across Niigata Prefect. It's closed. Which are you? Craft boss or premium boss? I am uh, Soul Energy. Soul Energy. Japan has so many vending machines that even right in front of this house we rented are ice cold drinks. William Osman tested 50 drinks in Japan because, uh, funny drinks. So why not do the same? 1,000 milligrams of uh, something gay. All of these bottles taste like uh, Red Bull without carbonation. Low-key trick energy. Caffeine, arginine, niacin. 
Has a little apple taste to it. Pretty average. It has 12 of something. Why is there fire on it though? A kind of pineapple. I just hope I'm not drinking caffeine. It's like 10 p.m. There were indeed 12 types of different caffeine in there. Come on. You can get hot stuff from vending machines, which is not a thing usually anywhere else around the world. Hoka coffee. Lukewarm coffee. What the fuck? Time to finish it all. So uh, what am I even doing at this point? I'm just using this as an excuse to put drinks under business expense. <sighs> Refreshing. I'm not even reviewing the video itself. Like, uh, okay, I, I don't know. The video gets an A plus or something. Like, oh yeah, Japan, mm. we have weird drinks here. Makes me want to get gun. It's like someone punched me in the mouth with a lemon. That is great. I really like that. Let's try some original gotcha style gambling. We can win a PS4, a PS Vita, which doesn't even exist anymore. I'd be happy if I even got a fidget spinner. Is this a shutter button for your phone? I think we need batteries, and it's just like one of those glow sticks. Oh, hey. Slay that power ballad in the ultimate Monster Hunter karaoke room. There's official Monster Hunter decorations, plushies, props and cosplay, all designed to immerse you in the Monster Hunter world. You don't understand how much I love the Monster Hunter series. I played the new mobile game the entire duration while I was in Japan. So when I heard that there was a karaoke for Monster Hunter, we had to go there. But to my dismay, it was remade into a bar? Which I didn't mind, there were like cool drinks there with cool foods that were themed after Monster Hunter. But where's the karaoke? And I know that the karaoke had to exist, because while the IGN video was 5 years old, later that night when I went back to the hotel, I saw a short that was 6 months old. So, we went back, I stormed to a receptionist's office and demanded to get my karaoke room of Monster Hunter, and we did it! We got a room that had Monster Hunter playing on the screen as an ad, and it was just a normal karaoke room and nothing yet. At least the karaoke was fun. Where should we head next? Connor Dog. Ring fit? That, that can be arranged. Today, we can burn off two thirds of a pizza together. Oh! Okay, go wider. Oh, how many cows are it? 11. Oh my God. So I broke into his apartment to find his ring fit to see if it can actually help me decrease my calories. Or if he's just a liar doing the- How'd you get in my room? You put your whole ass camera, go get the fuck out! Get out! Yum yum, ice cream so good.